Good morning, everyone. Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Perfect. Hey, everyone. Donovan Brown here with a video on continuous deployment, a DevOps practice I get asked about all the time. In this video, I will show you how to enable continuous deployment for an ASP.NET application using Visual Studio Team Services. We are going to start from the beginning by creating a new team project in Visual Studio Team Services. You can select the process template in between Team Foundation Server Centralized Version Control or Git Distributed Version Control. For this video, I will use Git. However, the process is similar for TFVC. Once your project is created, select Add Code to show the source repository. Visual Studio Team Services can be used from several different IDEs, but for this video, we're going to be using Visual Studio, so click the button that says Clone in Visual Studio. Once in Visual Studio, we're going to use Team Explorer to connect to our new team project. Once we're connected, we can then clone the repository onto our local machine. With our repository cloned, we can now create a new project. We are going to create a simple ASP.NET web application. Because Visual Studio creates a fully functional application, all we have to do now is commit our changes to Visual Studio Team Services. With our code committed to the repository, return to Visual Studio Team Services and refresh your browser. You'll see that the new code has made its way all the way to Visual Studio Team Services. Before we can deploy our code, we have to build it. And we can do that directly from the source control repository by clicking the Setup Now button. This will start the build definition creation wizard. Although we're going to use release management to deploy our application, we're actually going to take a shortcut and tell build to create a deployment template. This will make sure that Visual Studio actually has all the correct MS build arguments to package our website as a zip file. This is a requirement for us to be able to deploy our application using release management. Choosing this template, we'll have to do some cleanup once the build is created, but I'll walk you through that. If you click on the Visual Studio build task, you'll notice that the MS build arguments have already been provided for us. These are the arguments that the deployment template sets up that would not have been set up had we chosen the build template. This is extremely important to make sure that our application gets packaged as a zip file. There is one change I want to make. I want to actually change the location to where the zip file gets saved to match the configuration that we're building. That way we can build both debug and release at the exact same time. Because we chose a deployment template, there's a task trying to deploy our application. We won't need that in build. We're actually going to do this from release management. So we can delete the Azure Web App deployment task. And as a personal preference, we're also going to remove the final task that does the publish of the build artifacts. There's another technique that we can use that I'll show you here in just a second. So with the extra task removed, click on Add Build Step. And from the Add Task dialog, click on the All category. Now scroll down and add the Copy and Publish Build Artifacts task. Select the newly added task. Set contents to star star whack star dot zip. Set the artifact name to drop and the artifact type to server. Now simply save and queue a new build. To save you time in the future, you can actually save this definition as a template and use it the next time you want to deploy a web app. Once the build is complete, click on the build number so that we can actually get to the build summary. From here, we'll be able to jump to release management and create a new release. From the deployment section, click Create Release. This will start a wizard so that we can create a new release definition that will actually deploy our web app.
Once your release is created, give it a name and change the first environment to dev. Our first task, the Azure Web App Deployment task, requires a connection to Azure. So what we're going to do is click the Manage link so that we can go create that connection now. Connections to Azure are created using a service endpoint. For Azure, there's two different types of service endpoints, an Azure Classic and an Azure Resource Manager. For deploying a website, we're going to use the Azure Classic service endpoint type. On the Add New Azure Classic Connection dialog, select the Certificate Based Radio button. You can name the connection anything that you'd like. To get the subscription ID, subscription name, and management certificate, click the Publish Settings file link at the bottom of the page to download your published settings file from Azure. Simply open the file in a text editor and copy and paste the values from the XML file into the dialog box and click OK. Now return to the release definition, click the refresh button, and select the newly added Azure subscription. Now all we have to do is enter in the desired name for a web application and select what location or what Azure region we would like to have that website stood up. Now we're going to configure the triggers section so that this release starts every single time a build is completed. From the triggers tab, select continuous deployment, then select the desired build that we want to watch. We also want to make sure that the deployment of dev happens the instant that this release is created. So click the edit button next to the dev environment and under trigger choose after release creation. Now simply save our release definition and create a new release. For the build, select the build we just created and then click on create. Once the release is complete, navigate to the Azure portal and then search for your newly created website. From the Azure portal, you can then browse to that new website to see that we have successfully deployed our application into Azure. The way we have it configured now, every time you make a code change and you commit it to the repository, a build and a deployment will happen and your changes will instantly be available in your website. So there you have it, just that easily, we were able to create a CI and CD pipeline using Visual Studio Team Services and Azure. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'm Donovan Brown.